I'm Jenna Bosiger, and this is Cryptic Cryptids. On this episode, I went and explored Grapevine Canyon in Nevada, and it was in March of 2017 that I went, and it was a really, really beautiful day. The weather was amazing. And on this trip, it's actually um, right near Laughlin, Nevada. It's by Mead Lake and the Colorado River. And it's um, in the Spirit Mountain Wilderness. And it's a sacred location. You can just, you can tell it's also sacred to other, um, it's been a sacred area for a long, long time. Um, and there's something very special about it, which is that it has grapevines growing wild in it. And that's why it's called Grapevine Canyon. And I did get some pictures um, of the grapevines at the time they were, they were well, I can't say dead, but I guess I think they probably go through a cycle and hopefully they are still making grapes. Um, it's pretty neat that they're just out there making grapes in the wild like that. And the area is just so beautiful and interesting. And then there was just tons of clouds cre and, you know, coming through the rocks and stuff. It was creating really interesting and amazing lighting and the light was just constantly changing and it was just perfect, really perfect out there. And um, there was just interesting light orbs and stuff. And I normally don't post a picture of my husband, but um, when he got up from this rock, I got this picture and there's like these light beam orbs coming out right there. And I just thought that was interesting. That doesn't happen very often, I'll say. And so I wanted to post it just to show just how interesting the light is there. That, that's interesting. So geologically, it looks like a long, long time ago, like mm, thousands of years ago, maybe, there was a river running through here like a big wild river or at least it flooded at times and there was a big wild river and you can just kind of see traces of it in the rocks and just to imagine that is actually the case with a lot of places in Nevada and Southern California there just used to be raging rivers and they've all dried up and Really, they're continuing to do so, and I'm not sure what there is we can do to stop it, but I know that if we put money into it, if we would actually take some responsibility and admit to the fact that we can and are changing the environment, then we can begin to actually maybe change it in, in our benefit, you know, somehow terraform. I don't know, some kind of science like that, but... We're not really putting money into that. Anyways, I think it would be a good idea to do that. It says, Sacred Area. Grapevine Canyon, located within Spirit Mountain, is one of the earliest and largest petroglyph sites in Southern Nevada. This remote canyon is sacred to the human and Numic speaking tribes indigenous to this area. The human speaking tribes include the Mojave, Hulapai, Yavapai, Havasupai, Quechen, Papai, and Maricopa. The Numic speaking tribes include the Shemevui and Southern Paiute. The springs and plants in this canyon attract people and many animals, including desert bighorn sheep, which are an integral part of this unique cultural landscape. 
The native rocks are darkened by desert varnish and covered with hundreds of petroglyphs chipped or scratched into the rock's surface. Follow the short trail a quarter mile to the canyon entrance. While visiting, do not climb the rocks or panels. Even touching petroglyphs can cause irreversible damage. Be respectful and take a moment to listen to the land, water, plants, and animals. In turn, these precious resources will speak to you and reveal their natural beauty as they have done for thousands of years. When you leave this place, take only your memories with you. And don't litter. So I'm walking along, and this is towards the end, and I... My camera died, the one that takes good pictures. So all I had left was my cell phone. And I was pretty upset that my camera died at that time. But I came upon these amazing cactus about to bloom. And I have never seen. And the sky was kind of bluish. And I've never seen a flower like this on a cactus. It was so beautiful. I wanted to just stay there and wait for it to bloom, set my camera up in time lapse. But that did not happen, unfortunately. I would love to go back to this place. There's just, it's so amazing. On this trip to Grapevine Canyon, I got the best picture of a mud fossil giant that I've ever taken in my life and you know you've seen I've made several posts about them in different locations but this one is the best I've stared at this picture and I've painted it actually more than once I love this picture and I really want to go back and take more pictures of it because actually I did not know at the time that I was taking a picture of this giant. I saw it afterwards when I zoomed in. So I'm taking as many pictures as I can of all the rocks and basically just thinking to myself that I would look at them later. But like I said, a lot of the rocks, I saw the giants right then and there. It wasn't something that I had to wait and look at later. Although I was looking forward to doing that. So there's this one that just, and you hear about I don't know where you hear about giants as having big bulbous noses, but that seemed to be the case with a lot of these. And then there's one with this helmet looking dude. And this one looking off to the side. This one with his head turned completely backwards. I actually have another picture just like this from somewhere else. That's weird now that I think about it. I have posted it before, but anyways, this one, he's looking behind himself. He's, you know, got his head turned at like a 90 degree angle there. I mean, 180. <laughs> okay. And then this just zooming in and you can just see strangely, it looks like there's less like a lot of heads. And this one looking like a cat kind of head shaped creature. There's just so many rocks. This one with this bulbous giant nose and half underground. I saw this one at the time for sure. And I was taking pictures all around of him. I mean, there he is, you know, a giant looking just like a giant should look that's been buried for thousands of years and turned into stone. Now this is the picture. I didn't realize it at the time, but you see this sandstony figure in the foreground, well in the middle there. That reminds me of either a young king or a young prince. You know, he's got the this tall hat like on his head and in the distance there you can see is going to be the female giant that is my best giant picture ever but I'm thinking kind of he looks like Egyptian kind of tut look he looks really bummed and upset to about maybe that maybe he they know something's going to happen I mean maybe these are statues 
But the thing about it is, is in statues, you don't normally see so many details with the wrinkles and the, it's not, they're not, these aren't like necessarily pretty. They just look so real. They look like mummies. You know, they're not these perfect depictions of when they were younger. And even in Agnaton, you know, used to portray himself as unusual, but not to this extent, looking like a dead, old mummy. <laughs> and, you know, I took a picture of up close what some of these rocks look like. Not all of these rocks look all the sandstony like that, but a lot of them do. And then this one, this is the last of them, of the giant things. It just looks like some teeth, you know, and horns. I don't know, just some jumble of bones of some kind. And so now we're going to get into the petroglyphs. These are petroglyphs because they're actually carved into the rock. So they aren't drawn or painted like a pictograph. Um, they're scratched into the rock. And then this one looking like a DNA sequence. And I did my best with these to, um, I took the time to try and crop them, zoom in on them, and enhance them so that we could look at them and see them better. I feel like maybe a lot of them are meant to be seen in layers and then like sometimes um when you zoom back you'll see something in them that maybe you don't see so easily up close this is possible i'm really trying to make sense of them all they are definitely layered and there's a lot a lot a lot of feet print and hand prints and of course I'm counting toes because I want to know if they have six toes or two but there are a lot of um, alien cryptid looking creatures ant people in these petroglyphs they're trying to tell some story and I just wish so bad I could figure it out there's definitely, like I said, some kind of story going on. Something to do with the bighorn sheep. Symbols. Why doesn't this one have all of the fingers? I don't know. I want to know. This centipede looking creature. There are a lot that look... Like UFOs, they're going to be hard to deny that. And snake creatures and sun creatures. And lots of spirals. And this one is my favorite petroglyph, not just for the alien creature there in the front that's quite visible, but for like the two eyes. And then there's like a nose maybe down at the bottom. And or you could see the kind of cat creature with the legs. Uh, there's just a lot there to look at. And I love that picture. I just have a few more rock formations that I wanted to show that I thought were worth showing before I end this video. It was an amazing place, Grapevine Canyon in Nevada, and I recommend going and just make sure you 
don't litter and don't touch the petroglyphs or climb climb on them all right well thanks for watching and listening and next i'll be talking about topak maze in nevada